from the Digital Media Center on the campus of Southern Oregon University in Ashland, Oregon. This is Ramping Up Your English, an educational program for intermediate level English language learners. Here's your host for Ramping Up Your English, John Letts. Welcome to Ramping Up Your English, a program for intermediate English learners who have already begun the beginning steps of learning their second language as English. It's a program for people of all ages and from all language backgrounds. We take a content-based approach to improving our English skills. This is episode 34, segment one. Well, in segment 30, all the segments in episode 33, we saw a lot about horses, and the reason for this is our new unit of study is about animals. And we still have some things to learn about horses in this episode, as well as some things just generally true about, about animals. So keeping on that theme of horses, we saw the steps that it took to get a horse ready to ride it, if you're going to ride a horse with a saddle. So we use the example of that to do some sequencing skills in the last episode. We also looked at a little bit of vocabulary and we also did some idioms, some sayings that have uh, to do with horses. So today we're going to move on to an interview we had out there at the ranch with my director, Denise Ross. We had her talking about the horses and helping us learn about them, as well as her daughter, Michelle, which taught us the different speeds or gates of a horse. So if you want to see all those, go back to episode 33 of Ramping Up Your English. But to continue on and learn more about horses, this is episode 34, and let's watch that video clip of that interview. Previously on Horses, Director Denise Ross's daughter, Michelle, demonstrated the four gates of horseback riding. In this segment, we talk with Denise about horses. I asked Denise to tell us what things horses need. Here's what she said. The first thing a horse needs um, is land. A horse needs to be out, have the ability to run, to walk. He needs space. Um, most people say that you need one acre per horse. I don't agree with that. I think much more land is needed for a horse to be happy and to be healthy more than one acre. Uh, there's different types of how you can set it up. You can set it up where they've got an, you know, a couple acres to go out and run. You bring them back at night inside the barn. They've got shelter or you can put them in a dry lot where they're safe at night. Um, but they always need to be out a little bit and, and running and um, they're big animals, they need to move, and they need a lot of land to move on. I heard you mention dry lot. It's important that they be able to keep their feet dry. Is that right? What a dry lot is, is um, an area where you can put your horses. There isn't the grass. They're not going to be nibbling all day. It's just pretty much a dirt lot. It needs to be cleaned up every day, though, when they... Um, you know, it needs to be mucked, get their poop get and all of that. So it keeps a clean area for the horse, especially if they don't have a lot of acreage to roam around on. The horses need to be clean and they need to be in clean area. Now I've seen horses graze. Uh, do they need other food other than what's out there in the pasture? It depends on the time of the year and what your pasture is like. If you can do some really good pasture management with horses, you never need to buy hay. Wow. It's amazing. But you have to do good horse and pasture management. That's when you need a lot of land. So that it may be this horse or a couple horses are on an acre for a week and they can graze that down and then boom, they're put on a separate, another acre. Um, and they can graze that down while this acre grows back up and you rotate your pastures. That's also if you bring bringing your horses in at night into a barn so they're not grazing 24. Um, having said that, not a lot of people have the ability to do that. So they, a lot of times when you see them out grazing, they're just nibbling and they're just kind of 
being bored and that's just what they do. But then they come in at night to get their hay and their main meal in the morning and at night. I noticed there's a lot of touching, a lot of contact with the horses. They need, do they need to have that kind of contact? You know, I don't know if they need it. I know I need it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, just, you know, I mean, they're just such beautiful, beautiful animals. And for me, when I get around them, I just can't keep my hands off of them. They, they have their strength, their energy that, that comes, you know, to me. They give, I think, more to um, the human than the human is actually giving to them. Horses come in a variety of colors. I asked about the special words that describe a horse's color. Cowboy is the color is considered a bay. And that means he's a brown horse and he has the black mane. Oh, that's what bay means. That's what a bay colored. If you hear someone says, oh, I've got a bay, it's the brown horse, black, and he's got his black feet. Then when you see Doxy over here, and she was the horse that we opened the program with, her mane is the same color as... Um, the rest of her, so she's got the lighter colored mane. That's called a sorrel. A sorrel, okay. S-O-R-R-E-L. Okay, And that's sorrel. that's Western language. So if she was a um, uh, English riding horse, she would be the color would be called chestnut. I see. So it kind of depends on the culture you're. Exactly, context. and then you've got the paint, which is the ones with the tri-colored usually on them. The Appaloosas are going to have the spots and most normally you see the spots on the bottom end of them. Palominos. I was going to bring up Palominos <laughs> because I always thought that was a kind of a horse and no, someone said no, color. no, no, that's a color. That's a color. So you've got the Palomino which is going to be the really light colored um, this with the um, lighter colored mane, just about a white mane. And then there's the um, what are the ones called that I like? It's the opposite. It's the lighter buckskin. So the their skin is very, very light and with the black mane. So it's going to be much lighter brown than what cowboy is, but still have that black mane. Um, that's the buckskin. And then the palomino is a color. Then you've got your bay, you've got your sorrel, you've got your paint. And even within the paint, you can do the tricolor, but you can have a palomino paint. What? Which is going to have the white spots, but on and, and then a lighter brown. I asked Denise which of the gates she preferred when riding a horse. <laughs> when he's younger, yeah, definitely a gallop. You're, you, I think with the gallop, you, that's when you can actually truly be that quote unquote one with the horse because you have to be in motion with that horse when it's going that fast. You have to become, you know, with it, where with the trot, you can be trotting along and you can fall or, you know, whatever, and walk, you're doing okay. But, but that, that gallop, you better know, and it feels good. A gallop feels good with the horse, I think. It's just kind of a personal. rush, isn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah, they're just great. <laughs> well, I'm going to end, end our interview with just asking you, uh, how do you see horses or how do you feel about horses? Horses, I have always had a love of horses ever since I was a child. Um, I don't know what it is about them that I, I, I'm drawn to them. They, they give me energy. They make me feel good. If I'm down, I can always just come out to the barn and you can just do something like this and you can't walk away unhappy. You, and, and that's what I think the horses give to a human. Um, they're, I think much, they're around and on this earth for much more than a working animal. They give back. And again, you'll, in the future, going to be showing some clips with how um, horses are good therapeutic animals for um, cancer patients, for um, people with um, disabilities of any, any sort whatsoever. That's the, the uh, amazing part of these animals. So among everything else, it sounds like they're healers. Oh, I always said they're four-legged shamans. Wow. Absolutely, absolutely. You cannot walk away um, the same once they've touched your life. If someone wants to enter the world of horses, they probably don't want to go out and invest in a barn and all the food and, you know, the horse with the registration. What's a good way to start and kind of see if you really want to have horses in your life? There's some ways. Um, when I first came here, what I did is I leased 
a horse, not this one, but I leased a horse for my daughter. And that way you're paying for the barn, you're paying for that, but you don't own any of it. And it gives, it gave my daughter a chance to say, okay, is this something I'm really interested in? And then after, I think it was about six months or something like that, we knew it's like, yeah, no, we, we, I'm, I'm going to be a horse owner here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and then you can still, you don't have to own the land. You can um, lease land, you can rent this um, a, a barn like the one here, or you can go to um, stables, um, facilities that you just pay every month and they have the facilities, they have, um, you can buy your own hay or they've got the hay, they will feed the horse. So there's there's ways to get into it slowly if you, if you want to. A few vocabulary words about horses include feed, that's the action of giving food to a horse, you say you feed the horse, or it means the food itself, we gave the horse its feed. This is a horse trailer and this is an example of a barn. A barn provides dry storage for things like hay, which you can see here, as well as containing stalls. Now the word stall means the area where a horse actually occupies the space. This is an example here of a stall. If someone offers you a road apple, it's best to say no. That's what some call horse poo-poo. A better word is manure. And this water container is called a trough. I hope you learned a lot from this video clip, because this is the end.